What's going on everybody, Ian here for Cult of Mac. Now I've had an iPad mini around the house ever since the first generation, and it's always been a device that I've treated a little bit different than every other iPad I've owned. Now, this is the sixth generation iPad mini, which borrows a bunch of design cues and design trends from the iPad Pro and iPad Air that came before it, but it's no less niche of a product to use, which is kind of why it's amazing. Let's take a look. Now the iPad mini this time around comes in four colors, space gray, starlight, purple, and pink. Now for me, I chose the purple option because I think the iPad mini is kind of a fun device and space gray and starlight, which is basically silver, don't scream fun. Now this purple and the pink aren't all that colorful either. And I would love to see Apple really play into the saturation and color within the mini lineup and within their iPad lineup in general, but that's probably too much to ask. So purple is what I went with because I don't know. It seemed right. Now, as far as connectivity goes, I opted for the cellular model, which is what I've done on all of my iPads over the last few years, because it's very freeing to know that I can go out and do things and have connectivity if I need it on my iPad, and it's easy enough to turn on and turn off when I don't need it. On top of that, having 5G on the iPad mini means that I can download things even quicker, so I don't need as much storage on the device, but if it's something that you might not find yourself needing, you can save 150 bucks and just get the Wi-Fi only model. Now, like I said, as far as storage goes, I opted for 64 gigs on this because I don't need that much storage on an iPad mini. The things I'm using it for are mostly streaming and reading content and looking at things on the web, not working with large files. Now, fortunately, there is a USB-C port on the bottom. And again, on top of that, you have cellular connectivity. So they need to download something from the cloud, or I simply want to connect an external drive or something to my iPad mini, it's super easy to connect something up, access the files, work with them real quick, and then put them back where they need to go without having to spend the extra 150 bucks on the upgraded 256 storage. Truthfully though, I really don't anticipate needing to spend a lot of time dealing with large files on my iPad mini. The whole idea of the iPad mini specifically is that it's not a workhorse getting worked on device. It's a more casual sit back, relax, read or watch something on, on the device type of thing. Now that doesn't mean the iPad mini can't do those things because it more than can. The A15 inside of it is wicked fast and you can get those things done. It's just not built for those things. In reality, the way I use the iPad mini is when I'm sitting on the couch and I want to look something up quick while watching TV or I want to scroll through social media, check some email, you know, things like that. It's not a device that I'm using for really heavy workloads. Now all of those things can obviously be done on other iPads, but what makes them so great on the mini is the fact that it is so small, so compact, so easy to hold. By sitting back on the couch, you can easily just kind of, you know, one hand navigate the iPad mini. If you're in portrait mode, you can basically thumb type on it. So you don't have to get all like uncomfortable tapping through on a bigger keyboard. Now, on top of that, the iPad mini six is actually a little bit smaller than previous iPad minis, making it even more handheld while the screen has actually grown nearly half an inch. Now, obviously that increase in screen size is thanks to the slim down bezels on the front, as well as moving the home button from the chin of the device up into the power button, very similar to the iPad Air, allowing for a larger screen with an overall smaller footprint. Another great thing about the sixth generation iPad mini is the fact that it now supports the second generation Apple Pencil. This is huge because it means that the pencil is always with you and convenient right there on the side of your device, you know, when you're out and about. And thanks to advancements in iPad OS 14 and iPad OS 15, using the Apple Pencil with iPad is actually really, really convenient now because you can do things like use Scribble to enter things on the device or use Quick Note by simply pulling up from the bottom corner to quickly jot down, you know, notes while you're out and about. And because the iPad mini is so small, so compact, so lightweight, you can easily hold it with one hand while you're writing or drawing with the other, which is something that's way less comfortable and way less doable on the larger iPads. The iPad mini now also packs a pair of upgraded cameras. On the back, now a 12 megapixel shooter, similar to that of the iPad Air. And on the front, an upgraded 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, which supports center stage, which means you can actually, you know, move around when you're on a FaceTime call or something like that, which makes this really great for doing those FaceTime calls or Zoom calls, because it's small enough that even though the camera in landscape, at least, is way off to the side and you're kind of looking to the side, Center stage helps correct that and make it look like you're really making eye contact with the person you're talking to. Another thing I really liked about the iPad lineup in general over the last few years, but specifically this iPad mini, is the fact that iPad OS across the entire lineup is the same. It's not one of those things where like, oh, this device can't do split screen or slide over. They all do the same things, all those same capabilities. So again, while this is not necessarily a workhorse device, 
knowing that I can do the things on my big 12.9 inch iPad Pro, knowing that I can switch down to the iPad mini and do those same things, albeit a little more cramped, is a really welcome feature and something that I think makes the iPad mini a really compelling device. Now, it is worth mentioning, like I said, that some of those tasks are a lot more challenging on the iPad mini. And that's because split screen and portrait mode ends up with two very tall, very skinny apps and split screen and landscape ends up with more appropriately sized apps, but when the keyboard slides up, you don't have a lot of room to see your actual screen. Now this can be solved by getting a Bluetooth keyboard or the Apple Pencil for text entry, but it's just one of those things to consider that if you're going to do much heavy work on an iPad, or this is your only iPad, it's probably not the best if you're going to have to use it to get work done with any regularity. Another possible drawback to the iPad mini that is worth considering is the size of the on-screen elements. I know I've seen a lot of people talk about this, but the idea is basically that with the iPad mini, because you have the entirety of iPad OS that exists on a 12.9 inch iPad scaled down to the screen, things like app icons and text are a bit smaller on the iPad mini. Now for me, it's not been a big deal. I can bump up the text size if I need to. It's really easy to add the text control in control center. So you can adjust system wide fonts right there within control center, but it's just something worth considering in the iPad mini is that if you have trouble seeing things or not the greatest eyesight, the iPad mini may end up compressing things too much. And I also have a feeling that iPad OS over the next couple of updates will probably improve readability quite a bit on here as they refine the OS just a little bit to make it more mini friendly. Now as to whether or not you should get an iPad mini, it really comes down to what you think you're gonna use your iPad for. Now, if you used iPads before and you want an iPad to get work done, you know you're buying the iPad Pro. If you want an iPad that's maybe kind of a do everything iPad, the iPad Air is also a really good option, as well as the $329 base iPad with no modifier, which is a great device as long as you're okay having kind of that older design with the home button at the bottom and you know, some of those little limitations. Now, if what you're looking for is something that's ultra portable, something that's super handheld, something you can hold in one hand, something you can sit back and read on for hours, the iPad mini is an absolutely fantastic choice, if not the only right choice. Now again, I wish there were more fun colors because again, something that I'm gonna sit back and read and carry around with me, I'd love to have a little more personality with, but the iPad mini is just in a class of its own as far as what you're gonna do with it and how you're going to use it. Basically, unlike the other iPads in the lineup, the iPad mini is the kind of device that frees you from feeling like I have to do work with this thing to use it right. The iPad mini is not that, it's a consuming device. It's something that I love to use to sit back, to watch movies, to doodle on, to surf the web or surf, surf social media on. It's, it's a great device for those things. And the iPad mini starts at $499. Again, $150 extra to upgrade the storage capacity and then another $150 on top of that to add cellular to the device, which can make it a very pricey option, especially when the iPad Air starts at $599, only $100 more for that same 64 gig storage capacity. But again, if you want ultra portability or something that's super compact and easy to carry around, the iPad mini certainly takes the cake in that department. Ultimately, the iPad mini is a fantastic device if it fits into what you want to use your iPad for. And I highly recommend checking one out if you think it might be something that works for you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I apologize, we haven't posted a lot of this kind of stuff lately, but I'm working on getting back at it. Until next time, I'm Ian for Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.